Hey everybody, it's Richard from Dread Tech Reviews, and I am coming at you guys with a video not so much about an unboxing or phones or anything, but about frequencies and bands of the carriers themselves. Uh, I'm, of course, going to mention phones, but that's just so that you kind of see what I'm explaining here. Uh, so I have the Cricket Network that runs on AT&T, and if you kind of look here, I've crossed out some stuff. You don't really need to read too much into what that says, but if you go to any of the sites that give you the cricket bands and the cricket frequencies, you're going to see a lot of numbers like this. You're going to see 2, 4, 12. This will all be B2, B4, B12, B17, and everything. And these frequencies will either be in parentheses next to those numbers, or they're going to be just kind of off on their own. And when you're looking to import a, a phone from another country into the United States, I, I am as confident as I can say this, that you don't really need to worry about the frequencies or the 3G bands as much. Uh, I'll go into a future video, hopefully explaining more on what those numbers mean. But in layman's terms, it's just the wavelengths and the frequencies of how your company sends data from one point to another. So the faster the speeds, the faster the wavelengths, and so that's why they keep implementing more of these is because as you get faster wavelengths, you get less distance because they can't travel through objects as well. And so we're, you're going to be seeing more and more of these, and that's why when you see 5G rolling out, you have all these towers that are having to go everywhere is because it's incredibly fast wavelengths, and they can't go through walls. They can't even go through anything. So that's a video for you know a future time to explain a little bit about that. But as far as the cricket bands go on the AT&T network, these are the four that you're going to worry about. And with band five up here, that's just kind of like your 3G band. So if you've got that one, that's going to give you better service. But I, like I said before, I don't think that's 100% requirement there. But these 4G bands are the most important because those are the ones you're going to be browsing your YouTubes on and, and your Facebook. And those are the ones you're going to be needing the most. Uh, I'm not completely certain, but I'm, I know one of these two here is a uh, is the main band that AT&T uses uh, that Cricket would also use for their services, and I think that's the one that most people go on. So if we get too congested on one, it moves to the other one, which may you know may not have as great a coverage. So you may notice that you have slower speeds. Or if you're on the Cricket network to begin with, and you're in a high congested area, they're going to prioritize networks so that you know you're you may or may not have as good a coverage everywhere. But as far as uh, my experience goes with the Mi Mix 3 and with the Mi 8 Lite, both of these phones that I purchased for our, uh, my personal use and for my girlfriend's personal use uh, to replace old phones that we had both broken, uh, the Cricket runs perfect. Uh, we get 4G speeds everywhere. They're fast. It's in the 30s almost all the time. Uh, I mean, unless you're in a building, of course, but even when I had my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which also had the exact same uh, bands and frequencies of the Mi Mix 3, I also didn't have service inside of buildings all, all the time. And now that being said, if you kind of look down here at my jumbles of numbers, you'll notice that the Mi Mix 3 has all of the available supported bands inside of the United States. Uh, I have the global version of the Mi Mix 3, and so all of the bands that are included on there are all of the bands that uh, your AT&T and your T-Mobile are going to use. You don't necessarily need all of these to use one network, but the more of these you have, the more networks and the broader range you'll be able to use. So for the purpose of this video here, I circled you know, these four here for 4G, and then I went down and circled these four down here for 4G, and then there's your your 3G5 band. Uh, when you look at the Mi Mix, or I'm sorry, the Mi 8 Lite, you'll notice that these are the only bands that it has in common. And based off those numbers, you'd think that you might be missing some service somewhere. Um, in person, or not personal use, I'm sorry, in everyday use, uh, she uses the Uber Eats, which is a you know the GPS uh, service where people can order food and have it delivered to their house. Uh, it tends to give her directions uh, that are pretty accurate. So I, I don't think it's any more inaccurate than it was on my phone or it's any more inaccurate than it is on other people's phones because I've heard complaints about this and that on that. So as far as her phone goes, it seems to be performing as well as my phone or as well as the Samsung phone does on, on the Cricket network. So that's really cool and I'm super impressed that I was able to import both of these phones and that they both worked. Uh, as flawlessly as I ex uh, hopefully expected them to be, you know. Uh, down here 
if you are going to be using the T-Mobile network or any of the MVNOs on them, like, you know, what is it? Uh, oh, I can't think of any ones off the top of my head, but uh, I know Project Fi is one, uh, and there's a couple other ones that T-Mobile uses. But if you're going to be using those, you want to make sure, and I'll simplify this for you all too, you want to make sure that these are the bands that you're looking for. So it might be a little bit easier if these are the bands you're using is to use T-Mobile, uh, but when I had a US mobile uh, SIM card on my phone on the T-Mobile network, uh, I seem to get kind of some spotty coverage here and there. Even though I have all of those bands, I get better coverage here. Uh, so uh, like I said, though, I'll explain those numbers in a future video, but hopefully kind of my short description there as layman as it is will kind of give you guys a little bit better understanding of what you're looking at so when you go to purchase a phone you're not looking at a mystery field of numbers that doesn't make any sense that you could just kind of summarize it down to a couple numbers and put those together so that you when you look at one phone you can look at that spec sheet and be like ah I see that it works on the cricket network or the t-mobile network or whatever um, but if you also look in, uh, into other videos, you'll notice that there are some people that have tried it on the Sprint network, there's some people tried it on the Verizon network, and they got service and everything. So my numbers here and you know the information provided will not be the same for every phone or for every person in every area. I'm just trying to give you guys a good generalization or a good idea that the phone that you're looking at buying, if I'm showing it, is gonna work in the Pacific Northwest on the Cricket Network. So I will do my best to bring you guys as many videos as I can and to show you as many areas as I can, uh, like up in Seattle, hopefully. And, uh, I've got some family up there I can visit and I go down to Portland all the time so we can show you some stuff down in Portland and then even over by the coast, uh, by the, the beach, by Astoria and everything. We can give you guys you know, a few hundred miles of, of information so that when you're going to be purchasing this phone, you, you're more confident knowing that when it gets here, it's actually going to work. So uh, if you guys have any questions or comments at all, definitely leave them down in the description, or not, sorry, in the comments below. Uh, if you like my channel or if you want to see some more stuff, definitely uh, give me some uh, advice there. Uh, please subscribe and push the little bell icon, and uh, that'll notify you when I get some new videos. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time.